Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about sorting algorithms. So this is going to be the first video in the sorting playlist. We'll be having a lot of algorithms under sorting, which I'll put under this playlist. So let's start. What is sorting? Sorting is basically an algorithm or a process by which you're going to sort the data. That is arrange the data according to a particular sequence. Meaning, suppose if I have a bunch of numbers, right? I can have 10, 12, 13, 14, some numbers I have, random numbers. And now I want to sort them in ascending order. Meaning, I want to sort these numbers or arrange these numbers starting from the smallest number first, then the second smallest, so on until the largest. So I want to arrange in ascending order. So this is called as sorting the numbers, right? So when I say sort, there are two ways you can sort particular data. Either it is in ascending order, yeah, or it can be in descending order. In descending order, you will have the largest data first, then followed by the second largest, third largest, and so on, right? So whenever you hear the word sorting, that means you're arranging the data according to either it is ascending or else it is descending order. Now, in computer science, sorting algorithm is very, very important. You have a lot of practical applications of the sorting algorithm. Do you know where do you use sorting algorithm? Something where you use on daily basis. Like, for example, when you are looking for shopping, right, whether it's Amazon site or Mintra site, right, when you want to sort whatever, let's say you're looking for some um, computers, right, some you want to buy a laptop, right, might be now there's an option to sort the laptops which you're looking for depending upon the price, right? Where they give you an option whether you want the lowest priced laptop first or do you want the highest priced laptop to be displayed first. What is actually happening internally is they have been applying the sorting algorithm on the prices of the laptop, right? So are you amazed? Yes, so this is a very practical algorithm used in day-to-day -day applications as well. So there are many sorting algorithms, right? We are going to look at at least the basic and the standard ones, right? So this is going to be useful for your exams. If you are an engineer, you will be studying in engineering college, you will have the sorting algorithm as a part of your curriculum, right? Or else if you are someone who is not from computer science, but is trying to learn computer science and the algorithms, might be to get a job in the tech industry, this is also helpful, right? So the first and the basic sorting algorithm is nothing but called as the bubble sort. So in today's video, we are going to talk about what is bubble sort, okay? What is the process behind bubble sort? We'll be also writing the code using Java language. So I'll be using Java. Once you understand the algorithm, if you do not want to code in Java, you can definitely just, if once you understand it, you can definitely code it in any language, whether it's C++ or Python, the logic remains the same, right? Let's begin. So let's talk about the first sorting algorithm. That is the bubble sort algorithm, right? So the name of the algorithm is bubble sort. So what this sorting algorithm is all about, let's understand why it is called bubble sort, right? So what is bubbles? What, where do you have you heard this word bubble? Bubbles, I think, is related to water, right? When you have, a, like, let's say a container of water. And what happens is, let's say, if you are heating that water, right? Start heating it. The bubbles which are getting formed, right? So this bubble sort actually is getting the name from that context of water only. Okay, let's understand what this is. So what this says is, the way it arranges because it is used for what sorting, right? So let's assume we want, we have some bunch of numbers. Let's say I have five, one, four, two, and eight. These are my bunch of numbers. I want to sort them in ascending order, right? So my aim is to sort this bunch of numbers in ascending order, right? Ascending order means which should be come first. Number one should come first. So after you sort this, I should get one, two, four, five, and eight. This should what I should get my C. This is how my arrangement should look like after I apply the sorting algorithm, right? Bubble sort, if you're going to use sorting to sort these numbers, if bubble sort you're going to use, the way bubble sort works is, the way it works, it is going to bubble out. It is going to bubble out the largest number first. Meaning, see, when you have a container, right, suppose if you have a container, like suppose some bucket or something, and suppose bubbles are coming out, what happens? Bubbles are going to leave the surface of the water, right? From here, the bubbles are going to 
escape. My drawing is very bad, but I hope you get the idea, right? Bubbles are going to escape, right? So here, what this sorting algorithm does is the way this is going to work is it is going to first bubble out or remove the largest element from this bunch of numbers and put it into the last place. Okay, meaning let's see. Suppose we had this 5, 1, 4, 2, and 8. I said bubble algorithm, the way bubble sort algorithm works is it is going to bubble out the largest element and put it into the Put it at the end. Why at the end? See, in the output, after the sorting is performed, right? After the sorting is performed, because you're performing in ascending order, what is going to happen? All the smallest numbers are at the start and then the largest number are at the end, right? This is how ascending order is. So this algorithm is going to do what? From your, when you start your algorithm, it is going to first take hold of or find that largest element and put it at the end. As you can see here right now in my input, the largest number is 8 and it is already in its last, is in the last position, right? So it's not going to do anything. Then what is, let's say this is a step 1, right? So it's already the largest element is present at its correct position, okay? Now when you go to the second one, right? We have not still finished complete arranging those numbers in ascending order. What is the second largest number you have? Now you have to look, you are interested in looking only in this part of the array. Why? Because you've already placed the largest number at the very end. Yeah. Now we are between 5, 1, 4, 2. What is the largest element? The largest element is 5. So bubble sort is going to bubble out this largest number and going to place it where it is going to place at the end. That means how does your code should look like or how does your number should now look like? Your number should now look like 5 and 8 at the very end. And what numbers are remaining here? 1, 4 and 2, right? In the next step, what I need to do? I need to find out the largest number between 1, 4 and 2. And what is it? It is 4. It is going to bubble out this 4 at the end. So now what my, my bunch of numbers are going to look like is 1 and 2 as it is. I have 4, 5 and 8. In my next step, what am I going to do? Between 1, 2, 4, 5 and 8. Now, where do I have, which largest number I should look like? Should I, I should only look at these numbers, right? Between 1 and 2, who is largest? 2 is largest. So, now you have 2, 4, 5, 8. Only one number is remaining, right? There's only one number that is only the largest, that is also the smallest. So, simply 1, 2, 4, 5, 8, right? Did you see? We started with our input 5, 1, 4, 2, 8. These are our numbers, right? We used bubble sort. So the essence of bubble sort, okay, essence as in if I have to explain it in a very simple terms, what bubble sort does is the word bubble is for bubbles, right? Water bubbles, right? What water bubbles do? They come to the surface and they escape the water, correct? Similarly here, what is going to escape? The largest number because we are sorting in ascending order. So exactly opposite. If you are sorting in ascending order, what you should bubble out? The largest number. If you had to sort in descending order, what would you bubble out? The smallest number. Exactly opposite. Yeah, remember that. So now when you're doing this, you're we're doing in so ascending order. So I'm going to bubble out the largest number and put it at the end. Yes, for us, our, our, our container is just this numbers, right? So I'm going to just put it at the end. Now remaining, in those remaining numbers, I'm going to find out the largest number. In 5142, the largest number is 5. The way the algorithm is going to work is move this or bubble out this largest number to the very end. Then followed by 4, then 2 and then 1. And by the end, you will have the numbers arranged in sorted order, which is right now we are sorting in what? Ascending order. I hope this makes sense. Now let's deep dive into the steps and actual algorithmic steps for this bubble sort. So let's start the process again. Now we're going to go one step ahead, right? We just spoken about the intuition behind bubble sort, right? That is to bubble out the largest number and place it at the very end because we are doing ascending order, right? So let's start now. Let's understand how are we supposed to bubble out? Yes, we just said right now when we're looking at, we said in every step you had to bubble out what the largest number and put it at the end of the array or the list of numbers which you have, right? But how actually in code or how am I going to find that largest number and going to place it at the end? Let's look at that part. So here, let's say you're starting from this number, right? The first time you are starting from this number. What are you going to do? How are you supposed to find out whether the number is largest or no? Let's try about that. See, I'm going to compare this number and this number. I'm, look, I'm going to start here. I'm going to stand here 
All right. I'm going to compare between these two numbers. Who is larger between 5 and 1? 5 is the largest number. Right. What is R in? You are trying to do ascending order. Ascending order means what are you trying to do? You are trying to make sure all the smaller numbers come first followed by all the larger numbers. That is how ascending order works, right? Now, when you have 5 and 1, correct? Who is smaller? 1 is smaller. That means 1 should come before 5, right? So, if this is the case where it is not satisfying, that means a larger number is appearing before than the smaller number, can you simply swap? Let's perform a simple swap. I will just swap these numbers, okay? Swapping means wherever there is 5, I'm going to put a 1 and wherever there is a wherever there is a 5, I'm going to put a 1 and wherever there is a 1, I'm going to put a 5. So, I'm going to get 1, 5, 4, 2, 8 as it is, correct? So, we just swapped this. So, right now, we are standing here, right? Between 5 and 4, who is larger? 5 is larger, right? If 5 is larger means it has to come after 4. That means, in other words, 4 should appear first, right? So, can I again perform a swap? Yes. So, I'm going to do 1, 4, 5, 2 and 8 as it is. Now, you are standing here. Correct? This is your current number. Between 5 and 2, who is smaller or who is larger? 5 is the largest number. Largest number should come where? Towards the end. That means I need to again perform a swap between 5 and 2. What will you get? 1, 4, 2 is here, 5 is here, 8 is at the end. Now, you are standing here. Tell me between 5 and 8, do I require a swap? No, because between 5 and 8, 8 is the largest number and that is already appearing after 5. So, I do not need to swap those numbers, right? Swap means interchange the position between the two numbers, right? I need not know this, right? Now, tell me what I just did, the job of swapping, right? This is where I've done swapping or I can say basically I've done some processing, right? After this particular step, by the time I reach the very end, right? Tell me what have we achieved? We have achieved that our largest number, largest number between 5, 1, 4, 2 and 8 was 8, right? 8 has been placed in its correct position and that is what, what the bubble sort also said. Bubble sort said that in every step, I am going to bubble out the largest element and put it at the end. Right now, I, I have come till here and 8 is already in its correct position. Right? We do not have to do anything. If it was the other way around, like if, if 5 and 8 were not in its correct position, then, then we would have performed a swap. But right now, I need not do it. Right? So, this particular step, okay, there is a nice terminology which is given by bubble sort and what it calls is, this is called as pass 1. What we were saying was step 1 is now basically called as pass, simple, pass step, one and the same thing. Right? So, it's called pass 1. So, in the first pass or in the first step, I have just, you know, bubbled out the largest number and kept it at the end, right? So, let's continue. Now, tell me, because 8 is already in its correct position, right? When we were looking at this intuition, we saw once 8 is placed in its correct position, we try to find the largest number between where? Between 5, 1, 4 and 2. That means now you have to start looking from here, but you stop your search till 2. You do not go and search the last number, right? So, let's do that. So here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, we have, this is what I get, right? So let me write it down here, 1, 4, 2, 5, 8. Let's draw a line so that we know that this is starting off pass 2, right? So let me write here, pass 2. Now, I know I have to only go till this, right? So let me even have one uh, variables here, just like a pointer, right? Now, I'm going to compare between 1 and 4. Tell me between 1 and 4, do I need any swapping? No, because 1 is appearing first and 1 is the smaller number. I do not do any swapping. So, I move ahead. Between 4 and 2, do I need to swap? Yes, because between 4 and 2, 2 should be appearing first and then 4. So, I perform a swap. So, what do I get? 1, 2 and 4, 5 and 8 as it is. Because I performed a swap, obviously this i is going to move, right? Because we just moved it. Now, between 4 and 5, do I need any swapping? No, right? Between 5 and 8, do I need any swapping? No. Anyways, you are not supposed to go up after 5, right? Because we have already taken care of. So, this is our pass 2. So, by the end of pass 2, if you look at it, we actually have three numbers, last three numbers in its correct position. In fact, our entire array is already sorted, right? But how do you know? How does the algorithm know that the arrays have sorted 
there has to be some way that the algorithm should also know na? because this right now you are looking at the numbers right and we have some sample data but when you talk about algorithm those steps or whatever steps you write has to work or has to give you correct output for all the kind of data correct that means there has to be some process or some condition which is going to tell me for sure sure that okay once this sure condition is achieved you can stop your you know uh, processing and you can be sure that the algorithm has already sorted your numbers correct okay? so let's talk about that as well so now if you remember this was pass 2 let's talk about pass 3 so here what is my numbers 1 2 4 5 8 right let's start from here 1 and 2 do you need any swapping no 2 and 4 any swapping required no it's in proper order 4 and 5 any swapping required no. 5 and 8 any swapping required no this is anyways the last number nothing you could do about it, okay right? that means that means in my past three no swappings were required no swappings right now can i use this condition to actually tell the algorithm that if there is no swapping in that pass that means that you can stop because now your array or now your bunch of numbers are already sorted in ascending order. Yes, absolutely. See, if you look at pass 1, right, what swappings we did, we had we had actually 1, 2 and 3 swappings, correct? Because there were some swappings, anyways, the array which we got by the end of the first pass, it was not sorted in ascending order. So, we went to pass 2, correct? In pass 2, if you look, we did 1 swap. Yes, yes, after one swap, we did, we did get our array in a, what to say, in the sorted order, but you cannot use that or you cannot keep a count of number of swap. That will be a little difficult, right? Instead of that, what can be the short, short condition to know that the array is already sorted? If in a pass, if in the pass which you're right now in, for example, in pass three, I have no swappings, no, no, not even single swapping has performed. If there are no swapping done, can I say that my bubble sort has done its job of sorting the array in ascending order yes think about this if you still go ahead and you know perform the pass four suppose you went ahead and performed the pass four what is going to happen you're going to get the same array as it is because between one two four five eight there's not going to be any swapping it's just that we're going to waste computers time right right so what this should be the short short so what should be the stopping condition of a bubble sort if there are no swappings, okay, if there are no swappings in that pass, you can just say that your bubble sort has sorted the algorithm. I mean the entire array, right? I hope you have understood this. So let's go through it one more. What we did is to basically this pass, this pass is nothing but doing the job of bubbling out the largest element and putting it at the end. If you look at this, see because 8 was already placed in its correct position in the first pass actually number 5 is put in its correct position can you see 5 was initially at the first index right so the 0th index it's now been placed here at the end of the pass 1 in pass 2 because 5 and 8 has already been in its correct position the next largest number was 4 and if you look at it 4 which is present right now at the second position by the time the pass 2 ends it is now been placed in its correct position correct in pass 3, actually not, no changes have been performed because 1 and 2 right now are on the correct position. Okay, so let's write code for this. Let's write code. Okay, now to write code, so far we have just saw that, you know, the, in the intuition and also, and also in the working that, you know, we need to basically have to perform passes, right? So somehow we have to do passes, pass 1, pass 2, pass 3 and we have to go on until if at any point, if there are no you know swappings in that pass then i can you know just halt the algorithm and say that the bubble sort algorithm has finished sorting my elements correct okay? but think about in terms of code now for code you will basically take a follow because you have number of passes to we'll start let's say i start with zero right we do not know till how much what is the maximum limit meaning like like if i give you data okay some numbers if i give you okay what is the what is the max can i have a maximum number of swappings or maximum number of passes a particular array can have that means in bubble sort in bubble sort okay what are the maximum number of passes required for an array 
to sort the algorithm. See, obviously, if you look at this, right now we required three passes for the data 5, 1, 4, 2, 8. How many elements were present in this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, for five elements, we required a total of three passes. Okay. Tell me, is this, will it be true that for any five elements, I'll always require three passes? No, it actually depends upon the way the numbers are arranged, right? Because we are all about arranging the numbers in ascending order, correct? Now, if I have to write a for loop, there, there, there has to be something here. No? I need to write i is less than what? I do not know. What should I write? Should I write blindly i less than n? Yes, I think because, you know, if the total number of numbers are, let's say, 5 in your total number of numbers, which you're supposed to sort, okay? If those are n, what am I saying? If the total number of the numbers which you have to sort in ascending order if they are n if the number is n given by a variable n which is nothing but the length of your array or the length of numbers you want to sort then might be i could go ahead and say i equal to zero and i is less than n right i can say but let's try to prove it is it always i less than n let's talk about this so what we can do is think about this if you are a little bit sure, you know, know about what a best case and worst case time complexity is, you will might be understand what I'm trying to say. If in case you do not know what is time complexity or what is space complexity, right, you can check out my reels. It is already there. I've created a small reel, just 30 seconds, where it explains you what time complexity means and what is space complexity. Okay, fine. So, suppose if I have an array which is in reverse order. Reverse order means my I want to sort the numbers okay, which are given to me in my input in ascending order. Right? This is what I want to do. But the numbers which I get in my input are something like this. It is 8, 7, 6. Okay? I have three numbers and as you can see, I can call this as reverse order. Why reverse order? The reason I'm calling it in the reverse order is because my I want to sort the input in ascending order, right? But the input is present in which order? This is descending order, exactly opposite to what I want to sort. This is so that's why I can call this as it's in the numbers are basically arranged in reverse order, okay? Just because they're opposite to what I'm trying to achieve, all right? Let's try to apply bubble sort here. Yeah, can be. Let's do. So when you have 876 in the first pass, I, now I hope everybody understands what pass is now. So let's start with the first pass. Okay. So you're like this. 8, let me write here. 8, 7 and 6. We are trying to sort in ascending order. So this is between 8 and 7. Would you need a swap? Absolutely. Because 7 is smaller than 8. So after swapping, you would get 7, 8 and 6. You're standing here. Between 8 and 6, would you need a swap? Yes. So now I get 7, 6 and 8. Right? So by the end of pass 1, why am I saying end? Because now my i is standing here. There are no numbers after 8. So that is my pass 1 has ended. By the end of the pass 1, as you can see, the largest number, which is 8, between 8, 7 and 6, has been placed in its correct position, which is the last position, because we are trying to sort in which order we are trying to sort in ascending order. Right? Let's start up pass 2. Why pass 2? Because in the current pass, that is pass number 1, we didn't require two swappings. So that means what was I wanted we just, you know, uh, agree upon if there are swappings, even if there is one swapping, we are going to again continue with the next pass, right? So we are going to keep on doing this until we do not have any swappings in our current passes, right? So just following that logic, now the numbers I have here is basically 7, 6 and 8. Again, between 7 and 6, would you require a pass? Absolutely. So you're going to have 6 and 7, then 8. Between 7 and 8, do you even, first my question is, tell me, should you even be comparing 7 and 8? What do you think? Comment down. I don't think, right? We should not even be, you know, comparing 7 and 8. Why? Because in the first pass has already done the job of putting this 8 in its correct position, right? Our job was to just make sure between the numbers 7 to 6, I have to do what? I have to find the largest number and put it in the last position. That is my job of pass 2. Meaning, meaning as you increase the number of passes, that means this is your first pass, right? In the second pass, the numbers which you are supposed to, you know, do a check is actually going from index number 0, 2 might be only till here, only till index number n minus 1, sorry, n minus 2. Right? 
I hope everybody knows that the index with an, and an array is going to start with zero. So here, this is zeroth index, first index, and second index, right? In Passport, you're going to check from zero to n minus one, which is basically nothing from zero to two, right? After pass one is done, because this at the last index already has the largest element present, your job is only to go and check numbers between what from zero to n minus two. That means initially in the past one, you are checking how many numbers? N numbers. Here you are checking how many numbers? N minus one numbers. I hope that you understand, right? Now tell me here because you have done a swap, right? You will still go ahead and do past three. Yes. Now in past three, six, seven, and eight, will there be any swapping required? No swappings required. Can you stop? Yes, absolutely. Right. So when I took the reverse order that means if i want to sort in ascending order and if i had taken the reverse means if i taken the input in descending order and if i try to apply the bubble sort algorithm how many passes do i need actually to sort the array i require two passes can you see because in pass one there was some kind of swapping in pass two also there was one swapping in pass three actually i did not need any swappings right but we just took it because we did we just established the fact that there has to be we should stop only when there are no pass swappings, right? Now, can I combine this and say something like this? If there are n elements in your array, number of elements or number of integers present in your array are n, the maximum number of passes required to sort the array in ascending order is n minus 1. You require n minus 1 passes to sort, okay? And the last pass, and I require one pass to perform a check. Yes, as you can see, in this above example, number of elements are how many? Three, eight, seven, six, three numbers. In this three numbers, how many how many passes did you require where actually swapping was happening? Because swapping is where you're actually arranging the numbers. I hope you understand, right? So when you have pass one and pass two, you're going to need two passes where you're actually performing the job of swapping, right? And the last pass, which is the pass three, was more like a validation check, like a checking that, okay, that my array is sorted, right? That means even if I take the worst in case, worst case input, worst case input means the input for which might be the algorithm takes the largest amount of time in terms of time complexity, right? Again, you can check out my reel about time complexity. So in that case, if I'm trying to arrange an ascending order and if I take my input in descending order, in that case also, if there are n numbers, I require n minus one passes to sort, right? And the last pass does not do anything. It just does a validation check, correct? So combining all this, now if I come and write my for loop, can I write here i is less than might be n minus 1? Because this means that the number of passes you're going to perform are n minus 1 passes. Because you're starting from 0, 0 to you're going to go to n minus 2. How many passes these are? n minus 1 passes, right? Because the last pass, which is their validation check, anyways, is not required. Okay, because that is the, see, you're going to require n minus 1 passes only when the array is been sorted in a reverse order. That means in the descending order, if you're trying to sort in ascending order, right? Anyways, n minus 1 passes, all the arrays, are, all the elements are going to be in, arranged in its proper order. The last pass is just for validation check. Anyways, you won't need it. So I can write my first, in my, in my code, I can write for loop, which is basically the first for loop, which is responsible for number of passes, can go from i equal to 0 to i less than n minus 1. Now, does it mean instead of i less than n minus 1, if you write i less than n, is it wrong? No. Only thing is now your for loop is going to run for n times, okay? And the last iteration, that means the nth time when the for loop runs, actually the for loop is not, for loop is not going to do anything. That's all because there are going to be no swapping, nothing is going to be there. You are just wasting one iteration of the for loop. Yeah? Okay? I hope that helps. Now, let's go and look at the code for this right so here i have this code don't worry i will link this code now this code will be on the github link i'll link that github link you can find that code right so i have a bubble sort yeah i've written a public static void main right so i'll have an array here of integers now i've created an object yes and i've simply just called the uh, method sort which basically has the code for bubble sort yeah so here if you see for integer i equal to zero i less than n minus one i plus plus because n minus one passes but if you do i less than n, is it wrong? No, it's just that your code is not efficient because you're running one extra pass in which no swappings are being performed. Okay, fine. 
are coming down. Now, what is this? This is basically the job which in the innermost for loop is basically the process of swapping which you are performing, right? In when we saw on the whiteboard, what we did between two numbers, we are checking whether the number is smaller or larger, right? So what was the check? Suppose if you're starting from J equal to the zeroth index, right? J plus plus. Let's talk about this a little later, right? We are going to check whether A of J and A of J plus one, we are going to compare those numbers, right? Like we did here, Right? Between 8, so let's take this earlier example, between 1 and 5, which basically started from here, right? So your, your, this is your index number i, or let's take a red thing, I think that makes sense. This is i, okay, or this is the jth index which we are talking about. This is your j plus 1 index. We are saying whether a of j, if your a of j, is it greater than a of j plus 1? If it is greater, then what are we performing? A swap? Yes. Right? So same thing, if A of J is greater than A of J plus 1, what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to perform a swap. I hope when you perform a swap, we basically take a temporary variable. So int temp is equal to A of J. A of J will have the value of A of J plus 1. A of J plus 1 equal to temp. If you do not understand this, I can quickly explain it here. So it might be between 5 and 1. Let's write it down here. So between 5 and 1, right? This is where your A of J basically has a value of 5. A of J plus 1 basically has a value of 1. What you want to do is a of j should now have the value of 1 and a of j plus 1 should have the value of 5. This is what you are expecting, right? So for do this, what you can do is you can take a temporary variable. That means some variable integer in this store the value of a of j. So that means temp has what value now? 5. Now give a of j, give a of j the value of a of j plus 1. What does a of j plus 1 have? 1. Where do you want to give this? Put it here. That means you have achieved the first part. Right? Now, what we need to do in a of j plus 1, what value should be given? 5. This value 5, where is it stored? In 10. So, you're going to write a of j plus 1 should now have the value of 10. This is basically what we call as swapping. Okay? Interchanging the numbers. I hope this is understood. Right? So, when you have a of j greater than a of j plus 1, simply perform the job of swapping. Right? Now, what about j less than n minus 1 minus i? Why do I did that? Why, where, where, where is this coming? I think some of you must have guessed. If you did, just comment down below. So here, when we were writing our code or when we were looking at the intuition part, right? What we said that when you perform, when you finish one pass, okay? What we did, actually with one pass, your one element, that is the last element is present in its correct position, correct? In other words, in other words, if I start like this, let's write numbers here. So our numbers were, I think, 1, 5, 4, 2, 8. Yeah. So what we did is when you performed pass 1, right, during your pass 1, you went from, let's say, j equal to 0, right, till might be the last number, right. So from 0, because you're doing like this, a of j is, if a of j is basically greater than a of j plus 1, right, because j plus 1 is there, matlab j has to go till where? Your that is the first thing. Matlab in the first case, your first pass, the j value should start from 0 and go till where should go to j minus. Okay, sorry. This should basically go till where n minus 2. Think about this. Let's write the indexes here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, because you're doing a of j and greater than a of j plus 1, you should not stop till here. If you stop here, okay, if your j is going till n minus 1. Right, this is going to give you array index out of bounds and this is the common mistake which students have been doing and which have been seeing for so many years, right? You cannot do because j plus 1 is nothing but index number 5 and there is no index 5 here, correct? That means if you are doing a of j greater than a of j plus 1, your j should stop where 3 because when you are standing here, you will be comparing index number 3 and index number 4 that is going from 0 to n minus 2 because if this is n minus 1, this is what? n minus 2, okay? This is 1. In pass 2, Okay, in pass 2, tell me where should j go? j should start from 0. Okay, but should should j consider, should j be considering, uh, you know, this with this 2, should you even check with 8? No, because by the end of the first pass, you have already placed the last, in the last position, in the n minus 1 position, already the element has been placed correctly. All the, the great, the largest number in all the numbers has been already placed at the n minus 1 position. That means you only need to find or work between 0 to 3, correct? That means you need to go from where? You need to go from index number 0 to index number 2. Let me write it here. 
Why? Because if you stop here, from if j goes from 0 to 2, what is going to happen? a of j greater than a of j plus 1, right? So you will be basically checking 4 and 2 and that is what you want. So what did you do? When you go from pass 1 to pass 2, here you are checking how many numbers? You are totally checking n minus 1 numbers, right? Okay? Yes, so total n numbers. Here you are checking how many numbers? n minus 1. So in every pass, what you are doing? Decreasing 1, 1 number. So to write a formula for this, can I write j is less than n minus 1 minus 5? Look at this. In this example also, what is the value of n? Okay, for the first pass, for the first pass, first pass is nothing but i equal to 0, right? The for, for loop, initial for loop is start going from i equal to 0 to i less than n minus 5, right? When i equal to 0, j is going from, what is n here? We have total numbers are 5. So, 5 minus 1 minus 0, which is nothing but j is go, going till j less than 4. What did we say? j should go from 0 to this 3, right? Why? Because when you are standing at 3, 3 and 4 you will consider, correct? Similarly, when you are doing i equal to 1, what is it? Again, the formula is j is less than n minus 1 minus 5. n is what? 5. Okay, what is 1? Minus what? 1. What is this? j has to go till less than 3. So, in the second pass, second pass anyways should be where? Should start from 0 and only look at till here. Yeah, because you are standing here, you will, you will basically check a of j and a of j plus 1. Right, so that is what it is doing. So in this instance, this particular, the second follow-up is basically taking care of the how how many numbers you should be checking. Right, so j less than n minus one less minus five. If you do not write this, and if you only write, suppose you forgot to write this, and you only write, write j less than n minus one, will that be any issue? No. Why? Because it's just that now you are you know unnecessarily even checking with the numbers which have already been sorted and put in its correct position. Right, you are necessarily wasting time. So that is why. That, that's the only thing. Otherwise, there won't be any error in your code. Okay. So, this is about it. Now, what we spoke about in normal case, right, where we had taken this 1, 5, 4, 2, 8 example, we stopped sorting, okay, at which pass, at pass number 3, where there was no swappings, correct. That was the one of the optimization we did. So, what we can do is, how do we write this in code? In code, I'm going to use, write it using a Boolean value. I'm going to use a Boolean value. Boolean is swapped. Okay, initially turning it to true because I want it to first start the process of passing, correct? So, I'm going to check here if is swap means if the value is true, okay? You can write it like this or you can also write it equal to true if you get it confused, right? Both the case are okay, right? Because it is a Boolean value, I do not have to equate it to true, that's it. So, if it is swap, okay, I'm going to write, have, I'm going to come inside, I'm going to first mark it as false, right? Inside my for loop where actually the swappings happen, if there is any swapping required, where is the swapping happening happening inside this if condition? If there is a swapping, ha swapping is going to happen, I am going to mark it as true. Meaning that if in this pass, if any time swapping is going to happen, I am going to mark it as what? True. Correct? Suppose if there was no swapping done, what is going to happen after I finish this for loop? Okay? Because this if condition was never executed, because no swapping happened, your is swap is still remain going to remain what? False. Once you come out of this for loop, you are going to go and increment the value of i. If condition, if is swapped, what is the value of is swapped right now? False. Because there was no swapping done, right? We had initially marked it as false before starting our uh, pass loop, correct? So, if false means you will not be able to enter. If you are not able to enter, what you are going to do is you are going to come out of the for loop. This part never gets executed. So, this is the most efficient what bubble sort algorithm. I mean, the most efficient code for bubble sort. Yes. So, this you can, you can again find this code. I will be linking it down in the description. Right. Now, having spoken about all this, the last bit of, you know, bubble sort, you know, when you talk about any sorting algorithm are basically the time complexity and the space complexity of the algorithm. What about the time complexity? I think it is very clear. You have two for loops here. Right. In the worst case, worst case would be what? Worst case would be when you want to sort in ascending order and your input is in descending order or else the opposite. If you want to sort in descending order and the input is in ascending order. In that case, your worst case scenario, two times, there are two for loops, right, which are going to run. It's going to have a time complexity of 4 n square. Right. What is average case? Average case means if I have to run my algorithm, let's say for 100 test cases, what is the average time complexity I would get? You will again get O of n square. Yes. What about the best case? 
बेस्ट केस वुड बी इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सॉर्ट इन असेंडिंग ऑर्डर एंड द अलगोरिदम इज ऑलरेडी और द इनपुट इज ऑलरेडी इन असेंडिंग ऑर्डर फिर वॉट विल हैपन इफ यू वॉन्ट टू सॉर्ट इन असेंडिंग ऑर्डर एंड द इनपुट इज ऑलरेडी इन इन असेंडिंग ऑर्डर इफ यू लुक एट द कोड देर वॉन्ट बी एनी स्वैपिंग If there won't be any swapping, what is going to happen? Your for loop is going to run. This innermost for loop for the passes is going to run only for one time. Sorry, this one is going to run only for one time, and you're going to stop. Correct? That means what is the best case? And this is going to only happen if the input is already sorted. Yes, if the input is already sorted. What is space complexity? That is any extra space are you taking? No, you are not taking any extra space for any processing. So the space complexity I could consider as O of one, right? Because I am not taking any extra space. But you do require space to store the array, right? So obviously to store my input I do require space. But anything for the algorithm I don't require any auxiliary or extra space. So that is it's a constant space complexity. Yes, I hope this helps.